everyone. It's just about morning or maybe just past. Great to see you all today. So uh, apologies, I like to usually do these to start the day, but I've just had so many exciting things to do this morning with meditation and visioning and various other things that um, have been a little behind on my schedule. So let's draw a card for today. Let's look at our wisdom teaching for today. So I, I tend to draw, draw the card a couple of minutes beforehand because there's a, there's a time I like to meditate on the card and it takes, you know, different information to come forward. And I don't want to waste your time by just staring at a card while you're here. And the other thing that I often ask for is um, teachings around the card to reinforce the lesson that is available for both for yourself and myself from these cards today. This is an interesting card. We've had it. We've only done a week's worth of readings. I think there's about 80 odd cards in this deck, yet some of the cards have repeated themselves already, including today's, which is the dream of this uh, appeared or the dream, sorry, this appeared last week. And I, I asked again today to be shown uh, the message in a way that could help us both get some clarity around life and how to live it. And so what occurred to me is one of my favorite teaching in the Upanishads goes like this. Let me read it to you. Now, the Upanishads, uh, one second, and the, the Upanishads are actually these ancient uh, texts of India, what some are sometimes described as some of the most potent uh, spiritual te texts on the earth. And so... Uh, the Upanishads, they, they, they reckon they date back about, wow, about four and a half thousand years. And then they, the, the, the reason that they know this is because there's parts in the Upanishads which speak about a teacher being sat next to a river. And that river hasn't flown for four and a half thousand years. So the idea of the Upanishads were these were ancient wisdom stories that were, came from great seers and mystics. And then for a while, they were passed on through word of mouth. And then as the, the age of Kali, as it's described in the East, descended into the human consciousness and we became blind to our soul and very materialistic. Um, I won't go, could speak about that another day. But the idea is these ancient wisdom teachings that had been around since time forever in, in other words you know in one form or another had to be written down because the the capacity to 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 connect with that wisdom became less within the human psyche so a lot of scriptures appeared interesting as we went into the age of kali in, in the vedantic system about two thousand years ago i think it was this is when some of the great wisdom teachers appeared on the earth here what we call avatars like christ and, and buddha and lao tzu that they, they all appeared around the same time and then the idea was that they were just imprinting a collective window or doorway to these ancient teachings that would help in society now, my favorite line, and I, I, I've read the Upanishads, and I find them incredibly powerful. One, one of my favorite lines in the Upanishads goes like this. It's from, now the Upanishads, I think it means teachings. I can't remember now. It's been a while since I've looked at that translation, but they basically mean wisdom teachings or something, or to be sat with the teacher. And so there are a series of uh, lessons, the series of lessons that throughout the books called the Upanishads. So it's a collection of these teachings. One of those teachings that the, there's only a few pages long, each one is quite short, is uh, Mundaka Upanishad. I hope I've pronounced that right. My favorite line, which really sticks with me from the Mundaka Upanishad, is, goes like this. Two birds living together, each the friend of the other, perch upon the same tree of life. Of these two, one eats the sweet fruit of the tree, but the other simply looks on without eating. And so what this is describing is our two aspects of being. In relation to this card, let me just open my window again so I can see what I'm doing. In relation to this card, it's the same thing. One bird eats the fruit of the tree and enjoys life and lives 
joyfully and you know it's described as jumps around and eats the fruit of the tree the other looks on silently and it also says very powerfully these two birds it describes are the best of friends this is a very different idea from some of the earlier spiritual the the more modern spiritual teachings of the west of just be consciousness just be now you're you're just the witness this is saying something completely different that has been said within the yogic traditions for years in the world but not of it you know that we have two aspects of the completeness of our being sat on the tree of life one is pure awareness the stillness that we find generally in meditation the other part is the individualized spark of that which lives out a life now what we call the egoic consciousness simply as far as i can see after kind of studying it is when we just believe with a bird jumping around on the tree eating the fruit but there's no witness consciousness we we don't see our eternal nature so we we become quite fearful at the deepest sense of our being we believe in in death and limitation and not enough and and so we, because we're not connected with the soul self if you like we become egocentric me mine i'm getting i i that's my you know it's all about me but as we relax and realize there's two aspects of our being the witness and consciousness of the now pure awareness what eckhart tolle talks about as awareness pure consciousness and also you know the the dancing enjoyment bird when we have those two in balance that's the harmony of heaven and earth Eckhart Tolle has been speaking about this recently. It's quite a big change in his teachings. Uh, he, actually, some of his most recent teachings have been around manifestation. Uh, and so I'm going to share with you just a couple of paragraphs of his more up-to-date teachings. This is nothing surprising because Eckhart Tolle follows the path of what we would call Gyana Yoga, path of wisdom, the, the illumination of the mind, often found in things like Tao, Taoism and Zen, which, in which the awareness is turned in on itself, the mind examines itself until it falls away. So this is the path of introspection. But then in the path of introspection, it's a journey from the head to the heart. So at first, it's everything's an illusion, but there's no heart in that, no shakti, no understanding that the manifestation of life itself is as divine as the witness that's watching it. And so eventually, there's the awakening of the heart, which I believe is what Eckhart Tolle is teaching more about now. So what he goes on to say is, He's talking about the current um, problems with illness. And he says that you don't have to surrender to the fact that you may be ill. Um, it's in saying, I must surrender to the fact that I have an illness. He says, all you surrender to is the present moment. Wh whatever the body manifests in the present moment, that is what is. That is what you accept. With that kind of surrender, and this is the important bit, okay? Because a lot of us think, okay, it's just awareness. He's, he's saying what many of the great masters have said. That's just the doorway. That's not it. Inner peace isn't it. Inner peace is the doorway to the higher self. And Eckhart Tolle is starting to talk about that now. So he says, when you... Enter the kind of surrender to what is. Next teaching, a doorway opens into the transcendental dimension. That's important to hear. And that's where, listen to these words, in that transcendental dimension that some call the higher self, the divine, the universal consciousness, that's where the power of manifestation really comes through. Isn't that such a profound shift in his teachings about just being present? He's saying being present is the doorway to powerful manifestation. So he, said, he goes on to say, so for example, if you are diagnosed with an illness, you don't deny the illness or you don't deny you have no money or you don't deny your depression, etc. cetera. He, he says, but you also don't dwell on the concept of illness. 
and build an identity around it. He says the ego will use anything for an enhanced sense of identity, and it will happily or unhappily use the idea of something like illness or whatever. It can then become incorporated into the sense of self, if, especially if that is a prolonged problem. So these are beautiful and powerful teachings, I believe, that are helping the collective understanding, a new wave of understanding, that it's not just about being pure awareness, now consciousness. Sometimes I feel that that's almost like spiritual heroin. It's almost like just numbing yourself out to the emotions and the mind oh, I too much to deal with I just can't deal with them so I just have my spiritual heroine of be now be you know just be disengaged from the world it's all an illusion and then of course the suffering increases because we're not dealing with what we need to deal with which is how to integrate heaven and earth how to step into our mind and personality in alignment with what Eckhart Tolle calls transcendental awareness the power where manifestation comes from where change comes from individually and socially so that's what i wanted to talk about today let me just see if uh, there's any questions no i don't think there is that's great wonderful for for those of you who watch these regularly what i'm doing is i'm recording them as i do them and then editing them a little bit and putting them onto youtube so you can revisit some of these teachings uh, as some of you may know on this coming sunday morning i have a retreat morning where i'm going to be teaching you what i've learned about these two aspects of being i'm going to show you what meditation deep stillness is and how it can be achieved and also i'm going to start to give you the tools through affirmation prayer visualization and very important through energy work and qigong of how to integrate heaven and earth within your being to start to make powerful and positive changes to your life so sign up for that i'll if that interests you and hopefully it does because that's what we're here to do i'll put the advert um, after this uh, so have a beautiful day. Find your happiness, your expansion, your light, your joy, your fulfillment, and also understand the power of still contemplative awareness as the foundation for that creativity. Bye for now.